let's level set before starting this video. I just want to say that I personally believe that Israel has every right to go into Gaza and to eliminate Hamas based off of what they did on October 7th. I mean, if I were in their shoes and just had friends and family members, women and children brutally murdered and captured by this terrorist organization, I'd be chomping the bit to get in there and get this thing over with. That's totally understandable. However, it doesn't mean that thousands or tens of thousands of boots on the ground in Gaza is necessarily the right step for Israel. Now, there's an interesting article in Foreign Affairs that I thought hit exactly on this, titled, What Friends Owe Friends, Why Washington Should Restrain Israeli Military Action in Gaza and Preserve a Path to Peace. It was written by Richard Haas on October 15, 2023. I thought this article was worth talking through because there's a couple points in here that I think are spot on, very valid, and others where I think they kind of missed the mark, but are still worth discussing. So they say the Biden administration is correct in supporting Israel's right to retaliate, but it must still try to shape how that retaliation unfolds. And I think this is happening. You know, if you you see where we are so far, Secretary Blinken traveled to Israel. There were a lot of uh, behind closed doors talks. President Biden went to Israel, came back and had his you know fireside chat with the American public about Israel and Ukraine. Uh, and we've got a bunch of senators that have since gone over to Israel. I think it's safe to say that there has been a lot of high level discussion between the two countries. Ha starts out with a couple points here that I completely agree with, talking about the challenges that Israel faces should they go into Gaza. He says, Hamas does not present good military targets as it has deeply embedded its military infrastructure in civilian areas of Gaza. And we've talked about this before. I mean, the, the term that kind of gets clicks and headlines is civilian shields, right, or hiding behind civilians. But that's that's just, that's what it is in Gaza. It, it's not unique to Hamas. It's what we've seen with other terrorist and insurgent organizations throughout history. They can't, they, they wouldn't exist. If Hamas, you know, blocked off a certain area of Gaza and said, this is our military facility. This is where we're going to store our rockets. This is where we're going to conduct our training for our future infiltrations of Israel. It wouldn't exist. It would get destroyed the minute it got set up, right? So yes, Hamas is completely intertwined with the civilian population and the infrastructure. So there's no clean targets as Israel moves in here. They say employing massive force against Gaza as opposed to a more targeted action against Hamas would also prompt an international outcry. We've already started to see this, like from very early on, right? There, there's a lot of the Arab governments that are not supportive of Hamas. You can take Iran out of the equation here. They're not supportive and they're not, they're not shedding any tears for Hamas terrorists being killed, but they're very focused on the innocent Palestinian lives, the innocent people that are gonna be caught up in this fight, that it's only going to get worse if the IDF goes into Gaza. So that international outcry already exists, and as civilian casualties mount, you can only expect that to get louder and louder. They say, even if Israel crushed Hamas, what would follow? There's no alternative authority available to take its place. And this is a criticism I've heard recently, and I haven't heard a good answer, is what next? If the IDF could could push a button, go in, and all of Hamas is killed and no civilian casualties, right, in this perfect hypothetical situation, then what? Israel has not suggested that they want another long-term occupation of Gaza. That's a challenge in a lot of ways. So who moves in? Who, who takes over the governance of Gaza? The Palestinian Authority does not have the authority or the support in the area to do that. But that's something we've gotten wrong here in the United States in the very recent past. I mean, look at the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq as perfect examples here, right? The military campaigns in both of those wars were, was carried out very, very well, better than expected in a lot of ways. And in Afghanistan, very quickly, they, you know, Al-Qaeda was pushed out of the country and the Taliban were removed from power. Then in, in Iraq, Saddam was kicked out of power, the Ba'ath Party removed. Those things happened quickly. But the after, we did not get the after correct. So I think it's 100% reasonable to look at this situation and say, we know what happens if you get it wrong. How are you going to get it right? Now, they add that a different option would be to set aside a large-scale invasion and occupation of Gaza and instead carry out targeted strikes against Hamas leaders and fighters. Hamas's military potential would be degraded, and Israeli military and Palestinian civilian casualties alike would be kept to a minimum. I don't think this is realistic. This is where I kind of veer off from uh, agreeing with everything the article says. We don't have any good examples to say that drone warfare or, or aerial campaigns can eradicate a terrorist organization. It just hasn't happened, right? Islamic State still exists. Al-Qaeda still exists. We, we haven't been able to eradicate those, even with boots on the ground, many times. So I don't know why 
we're looking at Gaza and, and looking at Hamas that has extensive tunnel networks all across that area and thinking that an aerial campaign is going to do it. I mean, here we are two weeks into this war and, and, and Hamas is still launching rockets into Israel. Where are those coming from, right? They were ready for this. They're able to take this, this substantial bombardment that's taken place since October 7th and continue to fight. How much more is it going to take? Right? Israel is dropping record-setting numbers of bombs into a very small area. I don't think it's a realistic option to say, well, if we just keep doing that for another few weeks, we should be good. The evidence just doesn't point to that. The history just doesn't, doesn't point to that. Continuing on, they say the biggest danger to Israel is Hezbollah in terms of immediate short-term threats. They say the best way to keep Hezbollah out of the war is to persuade Israel to hold off doing something large that will be broadly perceived as indiscriminate. This too... I disagree with. Uh, I do think in the short term, Hezbollah poses the greatest threat to Israel. Uh, it's a substantial military force on their northern border. Uh, they would likely be able to attack not just from Lebanon, but also from Syria. They've got, look, they've got fighters that have 10 plus years of experience fighting the Syrian civil war and against different factions there. This is not a ragtag military. They're substantial. It's a serious threat. But I also don't think their involvement is contingent on how indiscriminate Israel is when they go into Gaza. You know, that kind of hinges on the idea that Hezbollah is there trying to protect the Palestinian people and to be on the right side of the Arab community or, or maybe protecting their allies, Hamas. I don't think that is the reason that Hezbollah would launch an attack once Israel went into Gaza. It would be that Israel being committed in any way, shape, or form to a ground offensive in Gaza would reduce their ability to answer a Hezbollah offensive in the north. Right. So if Hezbollah is trying to attack Israel and they see that Israel has taken, I mean, even 10, 15, 20% of their manpower, of their military power, and committed it towards Gaza, Israel becomes an easier target. Now, yes, 100%, you should always avoid indiscriminate bombings, fires, uh, anything that's going to kill Hamas, but also civilians. You should avoid that at all costs. But I don't think that's the thing that would prompt Hezbollah to act. They also talk a little bit about Iran and kind of broader escalation here. They say, reporting thus far suggests that Iran provided strategic rather than tactical support to Hamas. What that's getting at is kind of big picture uh, you know, financial military support, as opposed to the tactical nature of here's how you're going to breach the gate and here's when the operation is going to take place. So kind of suggesting that Iran may not have even known that Hamas was going to try to kick this thing off. They say, if it is determined that Iran was an active party to the Hamas attacks, Washington would have to consider further economic or even military action against it. I could not disagree more. Economic sanctions, fine, go for it, whatever. But direct military action against Iran? Come on. That, that should not be on the table right now. Look, the, these, there's so much context missing here. Iranian-backed Shiite militias have been active in the Middle East for a long time. They've been carrying out attacks against American forces, against Israeli interests, and our allies for a long time. That's nothing new. Now, the scope and the brutality of the October 7th attacks in Israel, that is new in a lot of ways. And it's awful and tragic for the Israeli people, 100%. But why, is, why would that why would Iranian involvement in an attack in Israel be a red line for the United States to go to war with Iran when Iranian equipment funneled in and, and used by Iranian-backed militias in Iraq that killed American soldiers? That's not a red line, right? So we back this out with some context. This is a, a horrible event, 100%. But there's been a bunch of events over the past 20 years that always seem like they could lead to something bigger, and they just haven't, which is a good thing. You know, the whole first half of this article is talking about how Israel needs to be very deliberate. So nothing they do leads to broader escalation. And then right at the end, they just sneak in here, you know, maybe, maybe the U.S. could uh, kick off a war with Iran. Again, just, you know, I totally disagree with that last part. But that's all I got for now. I will link this article as well as the national security sit reps I put out on Substack in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.